To this point, we've played with exponential functions, their general shapes, and related transformations. Given that, we've assumed that the base is always 2, and our graph looks like this. We have the asymptote over here at y equals 0, and our graph has a y-intercept right here when x equals 0, y equals, well, anything to the 0 is 1. So, 0, 1. Also, when x is 1, well, y equals 2 to the 1, or 2. When x equals 2, y would be, well, 2 to the 2, or 2 squared, is 4, and so on. It just grows like this. In this tutorial, we'll note that the base doesn't have to be 2. Let's look at what happens when we have other bases. For example, let's try 3. In this case, the graph still has an asymptote at y equals 0. That is, it never touches the x-axis, but gets awful close. Also, it crosses through 0, 1. So same y-intercept. Anything to the 0 is 1. But we do see that it grows more quickly after that. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And it just grows more rapidly. So, if the base gets bigger, we have a couple of traits that don't change. That is the asymptote and the y-intercept. But we also note that there is some change. The growth is more rapid out here. So let's consider what happens if the base gets smaller. Well, if the base is 1, well, knowing that 1 to the anything is just 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and so on. So our graph would just look like this. It has that same y-intercept, that is y equals 1, but it's just a flat line after that. Hmm, and we understand why having a base of 1 doesn't really fit into our definition of an exponential function. But it is worth noting that this is the turning point for a change from exponential growth to exponential decay. So let's try a base below 1. Let's try 1 half. And in this case, we see that y is getting smaller and smaller as the x gets bigger. When we call that exponential decay. The y-intercept, well, it's still 1. So that's the same. And also we know that the gradual movement towards the asymptote happens over here. y approaches the 0 as x gets bigger. So it's still the same asymptote, that is y equals 0. We're just approaching it as we go right, instead of left, like we did in exponential growth. And let's notice something else interesting here. The y equals 2 to the x, and the y equals 1 half to the x, look very similar. We definitely see some symmetry. And we think back to horizontal reflections. y equals 1 half to the x, is a horizontal reflection of y equals 2 to the x. So, thinking back to reflections, a horizontal reflection happens when the x becomes negative x. So let's see. If x, the exponent in this case, is switched to negative x, then we think back to our negative exponents, and we remember that we can just flip the base. Remember? A negative exponent causes our base to flip, and we get 1 half to the x. Making sense of little things like this will definitely make it easier to remember these patterns. Take a moment to think about this. Back up the video if needed. A good memory device. In this tutorial, we looked at the graphs of exponential functions, and we started with our familiar base of 2. And then we looked at what happens if that base changes. Let's put our base b on a number line. And thinking back to our restrictions around exponential functions, well, b has to be greater than 0 and it can't be 1. So let's eliminate the negatives, and also we'll have to eliminate the 1. And here's what we're left with. So b can be between 0 and 1, and then we skip over the 1, and then we can see that b can get bigger after that 1. 
and we noted that in this range, as b gets bigger, the asymptote stays the same, that is y equals zero, and the y-intercept is the same, that is y equals one, but the rest of the graph bends up, growing faster as b gets bigger. Then we have a transition happening at b equals one, so that b between zero and one is our exponential decay. The smaller the base, in this case, the more rapid the decay. But we also note that the asymptote is still y equals zero, and the y-intercept is still one. We also note that for every exponential growth situation, we can reflect around the y-axis to create a corresponding exponential decay situation. A base two can become a base one-half. And this is perfectly consistent with what we learned about horizontal reflections. That is, we switch the x with a negative x.